الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in Surah Al-Ahzab chapter 33 in verse 21 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخرة وذكر الله كثيرا there has, there has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and remembers Allah often. So all of the Prophets of Allah, alayhim salatu wassalam, they had two main missions in life. The first was to deliver Allah's message and clarify it to the people. That was their main main uh, mission. And then the second one is to provide practical demonstration of the message and give us the best example to follow. So Allah wa ta'ala made Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, infallible. And he ordered the believers to take him as a, an example, as a role model to, you know, to follow and to live according to his example. And he made all of his sayings, whatever he said, whatever he didn't say, his, you know, and whatever he did, his action and inaction, they're all legislation. So emulating the Prophet وسلم, only results in good. Sometimes we don't understand what the wisdom is behind the sunnah, but that understanding it is not important. And I give you the example of turning the air conditioner on. Somebody with no degree, no knowledge, cannot read and write, can flick the switch and enjoy an air conditioning, and somebody with a PhD in physics can do the exact same thing. You don't need to know what, what the inner workings is, all you need to do you need to know is how to push that button to benefit from it. So whether we understand the sunnah or not, we have to understand that it is, the, it is a great example to follow, whether we appreciate it or not. So what practical things can we do in our life to keep the sunnah alive in our, you know, in our life? Because the Prophet ﷺ is no longer with us, but his sunnah is there. So, three points I want to I bring up. The first one is the Prophet's Sunnah is valid for any place and any time. If somebody thinks that we live in the 21st century, certain parts of the Sunnah are no longer applicable, that's an indication that they did not understand what that Sunnah is and did not understand the benefit behind it. Allah Taala gave us Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example until the end of time. It wasn't an example for a point in time and then life goes on. Everything was choreographed by Allah. I mean, the Prophet did not do anything of his accord. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. So we have to, in the back of our mind, when we don't understand maybe as some part of the sunnah, we should never look at it as maybe something that's no longer valid. Every part of the sunnah is valid until the day of judgment in any part of the world, in any time in existence. So the second point is we have to study the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This knowledge is not going to come to you by osmosis. You have to put the effort. You have to study it. And alhamdulillah, there's many... Uh, many compilations out there in multiple languages, readily available online, in books. So the information is there. What's missing is the will to go seek it, learn from it, and implement it. And the third point is pick routine events in your life. Pick, you know, any stuff that you're doing, you know, all the time. And, and seek out what does the sunnah, what did the Prophet Sallallahu do. So this is like, you know, uh, when you seek these things, these are not something extraterrestrial. I mean, these things you do every day. 
whether it's the sunnah, the confirmed sunnah that you, pr- that you pray before or after the fard prayer. I mean, these are confirmed sunnahs that we should, you know, we should get into the, uh, the habit of doing. Uh, duha prayer, which is 20 minutes after sunrise up until 20 minutes before duhr. Those are great prayers to perform in that time. Night prayers, you know, what to say when entering the home, exiting the home, eating, you know, all of the stuff, you know, that we do every day. Seek what the, what the sunnah is. What did the prophet do? And emulate it. Adopt it. Do it slowly. Take, pick a few. Do them all the time until they become a habit. Once they become a habit, then you pick something else. But the important thing is you have to seek it and implement it so the sunnah is alive in, you know, in your life. You know, you wake up, you know, you go to sleep, uh, you ride the car, you start your work day. I mean, these are all their sayings from the Prophet ﷺ that are very beautiful. And that helps you, you know, bring Allah's support in your, in your life when you're, when you're doing this. And you can do it individually or as a family. And as a family is even better because when you do it as a group, others encourage you to do it. When you see other people doing it or when you do it, you encourage other people to do it. So do it individually and collectively. Allah Taala says in Surah Al-Anfal, chapter eight, in verse thirty-three: "وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ." But Allah would not punish them while you, O Muhammad, are among them, and Allah would not punish them while they seek forgiveness. So this is why the implementing the sunnah is so important. You only have two venues to be safe from Allah's punishment. The first one is to repent and make istighfar when you do something wrong. And the other one is if the Prophet is alive with you. Now the, sun, the, the, uh, the Sahaba, the Prophet was with them, so they were safe from Allah's punishment. So you may say, well, the Prophet you know, died long time ago. He may be dead, but his sunnah is, is there. When the sunnah is alive in your life, it's the same as the Prophet is alive with you and alive with us in our time. So if you want to be safe from Allah's punishment, that's a great way to do that, is to adopt as much of the sunnah as you can do. Start small, build on, build on, build on, but start. And the verse says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَعْذِبُهُمْ And وَمَا كَان is the most stringent negation possible in, in the Arabic language. It doesn't negate an event, it negates the possibility of the event ever happening. So... Allah is promising you that if the, the sunnah of the Prophet is alive in, in your life, you will be safe from his punishment. So, get the knowledge of the sunnah and implement it, and implement it in your life. Now, the earlier generations, they held firm to the sunnah. Unfortunately, in our time, we, when, when, you, when you tell somebody something is sunnah, what comes to their mind is it's optional. I don't have to do it. That, it, that was not the attitude of the sahaba and the tabi'een and, and the, the righteous people that came after them. When something is a confirmed sunnah, in their mind it was the same thing as the Quran. It was not something optional. It was something they highly sought after and that's how we have to look at sunnah. Not as something, oh, I'll probably leave it, no problem. No, that, that's, not how, that's the wrong way of looking at sunnah. The sunnah is very important and we have to, to seek it. We have to seek that knowledge and we have to implement it. <clears throat> and I give you an example that we have every, every Ramadan. Moon sighting, you know, for to start the month and to end the month. Do we, do we look at, you know, seek the moon to see it? Or do we go with the astronomical calculation? 
And one of the brothers, Jazahallah Khair, he always reminds me every year that if we go with the calculation, are you ready to abandon the sunnah of having to go physically and look for the moon? So if we start going after the calculation, that sunnah is gone. Do we want to be the generation that abandons part of the sunnah and the sunnah gets forg forgotten and no longer implemented? That's why, you know, Jazakallah khair for reminding us that yes, I use the calculation to try to predict the days, but still we have to watch for the, you know, for the moon, do the moon sighting and go through the whole process just like the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba did it. So if we do that, then we keep that sunnah alive and not have it die, you know, in our, in our generation. So I finish with, do you love the Prophet? How much do you love the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How much do you want him to be happy with you? A lot, right? right? I mean, you have people that are ready to kill if, some, if somebody insults the Prophet in, front, in their presence. That's how much love our, we Muslims have for our, for our Prophet. And our, we have an appointment with him. He set an appointment on the day of judgment. Let me, set the, let me set the scene for you. It's a long day. The day of judgment is very long, very hot. No food, no water. Everybody's thirsty. Everybody's sweaty. It's a long, very long day. And then everyone's gathering at the Prophet. ﷺ. The angels bring down Al Hawd, Nahr al Kawthar. It's a big pool. That's the only source of water. And it's not water, it's, it's, it's like milk. And when you drink from it, you'll never ever be thirsty. That's our, our rendezvous with the, with the Prophet ﷺ is عند الحوض. That's when we meet him. Now everybody's going to go to drink. Some will drink, others will be turned back. The angels will grab and say, no, get away. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, Ummati, Ummati, where are he, he's from my Ummah, where are you taking him? They would tell him, you don't know what he's done after you. Maybe he squandered his Sunnah. He ignored it. He worked against it. Do you want to be that person? A'udhu Billah. We want to be among the people who, when the Prophet sees you, you say, Ya Abdullah, come, I know you by name. You implemented my sunnah. You defended my sunnah. You followed my example in a time that was so horrendous when sin was open and you stuck to the sunnah with all the difficulties that come with it. You want to be that person, right? You want that Prophet ﷺ to, to, to give you a big hug and, 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 you know, and be happy with you. Well, if you want the Prophet to be happy with you, you don't do it through wishy-washy, through wishing, through, you know, dreams and things like that, through talk. You have to back that talk with action. You can't even tell, you know, for the married people, you can't even tell your wife, I love you, without proving it. You have to, the action has to prove the words, because otherwise, if, the, if it's just words, they're meaningless. You have to have action behind it. And the way we prove that we love the Prophet ﷺ is by studying his sunnah, understanding it, adopting it in our life and implementing it. If you truly love the Prophet, that's, that's what you do. So, and we do imitation, not innovation. When the Prophet says, do this much, stick to that. Don't try to do something else. Imitation, not innovation. So what is needed is seriousness. We have to be serious. You know, you can hope for whatever you want, but you have to work to achieve it. And we need seriousness in learning and implementing and preserving the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.